and welcome to the morning meeting. The show is brought to you by the Briones Consulting Group, and I am your host, Julio Briones. If you're new to the channel, thank you and welcome. Uh, we hope that uh, you find our content valuable. And if you're returning, welcome back. You know, we hope that uh, we hope to continue to provide you with quality content. So, just uh, before we get started, a couple of things. Number one, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell so that you can always stay abreast and stay on top of our latest content. The number two, um, this video is gonna be our first experiment where we're going to try to put chapters. So down below, there will be the timing and everything else needed. So you can skip to the parts that you want to specifically go into. Today's video is about the five most common misconceptions about starting a home care company. So before we get started, any offers or anything like that are in the um, description box below. And also uh, don't forget to join us live every Wednesday. There will be a link to the form below if you want to pre-ask questions. It's kind of like an ask me anything when it comes to home care. The show, the segment is actually called Ask the Home Care Expert Q&A. All right, so let's begin. Myth number five, this industry is too competitive for me to succeed. Look, this is one of the few industries where the more home care agencies you see in a particular area, the higher the likelihood of success for you. All right, the, the um, fact, the facts are this. 10,000 people a day turn 65. We've all heard this. If you're, if you're watching this video, you've heard that at some point in before opening up your office, okay? 10,000 people, that, that's not a, a small number, but here's the part that they don't tell you. Okay, your average person begins looking for help of some sort, either downsizing their home or needing home care or something at about the age of 72. So those 10,000 people today that turn 65, that means you have potential clients in about seven years. That means the people that turned 65 seven years ago are your clients today. So 10,000 a day. Let's look, think about this. That's 3 million people a year in any given area, which your average service area for an office, franchise or non-franchise, it doesn't make a difference is a population of pick where you are, look in your surrounding area of about 300,000 people. Some are more, some are less, we're talking about averages here, okay? That 300,000 population is gonna have anywhere from eight to 15% on average of people in that ideal age group. So let's work with 10%. That means in your area, there are about, on average again, 30,000 people that need your services, okay? 30,000. You, you only need about 30, give or take, with the average pricing to of billable hours over the course of a year in order to make a million dollars in your business worth of billable hours. So if you're averaging between one and three clients every month, new clients, and then, you know, you gotta account for attrition and everything else. So one to three, depending on the month, you should be able to, in theory, once you figure it out and start getting the ball rolling the right way, you should be able to hit your goal within a year easily. Okay, so if you're brand new, you gotta figure the learning curve, so let's say 18 months, 18 to 24 months, you should be able to hit a million dollars if you're following things right. 30 people out of 300,000. That tells me that one, no matter where you're setting up shop, there is a high likelihood of you, as long as you put forth the effort of you being able to find success. The other thing is that when people say make statements like this, the fact is that they're making these statements from an apples 
to flying wombats point of comparison, okay? Let me explain what that means. When you're looking at your business, you wanna do an apples to apples comparison. You don't wanna sit there and compare your, your, uh, your apple, which is your business, to a flying wombat, okay? So you're not, basically, you're not gonna compare your home care agency that is independently owned, that provides high-end private duty, okay, to a Medicaid agency that is franchised. You are not gonna compare your franchised, privately owned, middle of the road, okay, which we're gonna stay in that competitive range, to a white glove agency, okay? This is what we're saying. You gotta compare apples to apples. If you are independent, compare yourself to another independent in your area. If you have only been operating for one to three years, compare yourself to one to three years. Okay, do not sit there and try to compare your brand new self to somebody who's been around for 20 years and that's grown a monster agency. Do not compare yourself who is an independent to a franchised agency. Simply being because there's different levels of supports, fees, everything else that gets involved and advertising and so on and so on and so on when we are trying to do a comparison of a franchise agency. So now, does that mean franchise is better than independent? No, I come from the world of franchising. I've been in business, in this business for a long time. I'm you know, currently 40, 44 years old at the time of this recording. And I've been doing this off and on since I was about 15, okay? With some gaps in between here and there, you know? So I, I have about 20 years experience in this industry altogether, all right? In that 20 years of my experience, I've also worked in franchising and I've worked for independence. I've also been in private consulting for quite a while and combined total, I have opened oh, well over 40 offices across the US, Canada, and even a couple in the UK, all right? I don't do licensing, but this is what I do. Operations, systems, management, business development, recruitment, all right? And let me tell you, I have heard this a lot. It's different here. No, it's not. No, it's not. I don't care where you are. It's not. You still need the same elements to have success. Okay. Myth number one, myth number one or number five. Myth number four, home care is a straightforward business. I have seen before I decided to start doing YouTube videos. And actually this was my big inspiration is that I have seen a lot of other companies that do videos. And let me tell you, this is one of my pet peeves. There's actually a couple of them um, moving down that people have done videos about. And I'm, I'm going to be very frank with you. This one really upsets me. Um, actually, all, all the rest of these do, but this one upsets me quite a bit. Home care is not straightforward. You have an element of your business that is focused on recruitment. You have, and that is bringing in caregivers. If you cannot and do not understand how to bring in caregivers, then you will fail. Okay, recruitment is easy. Okay, and we'll cover that when we get to the number one myth. Okay, but recruitment is easy. Just pay people more money. They'll come flocking to you. Keeping them, that's another story. Okay, number two, business development, marketing, whatever you want to call it. All right, the, the fact is you are a sales company that happens to provide home care services until you start to get that first client. That's it. All your efforts until you get that first set of clients has to be focused on sales, 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 sales. Once you get that first client, we move into the third element, which is providing home care. And there we need to focus on quality assurance. What is the best method to grow our business while we provide the best service. How do we differentiate ourselves from our competitors? By providing the best service. This is it. And this is the tripod that sustains your business. All right, we have our business, okay? It, hold, it is held up on a tripod of recruitment, sales, and quality, period, that's it. Without those three elements, you have do not have a successful business, and it is not straightforward to get there. Okay, this is not like selling a product on Amazon. I have my product, I create my my content tagline, and I sell my product. I get paid. This is not it. There's a lot of moving parts. 
And once you understand that there's a lot of moving parts, you will have a higher likelihood of success. Number three, this is another one of those things that I actually have seen a lot of videos on. And I hear all these people all the time. No, you need to be present 24 seven. You can never run your business on its own. You cannot have an absentee. I call bull, okay? That is 100% BS. I have done this many times over the course of the year. Over, and over my year's experience, you know, here's what it comes down to. The one thing that I have found, you are able to run the business however you need to in order to achieve success. If you need to have a life like most people do, set systems in place. And if you need to be able to leave, like I, I actually have a client that is extremely successful. Okay, but she cannot come in before 10 a.m. and she must be out the door by two. Home care is a 24 seven business. That much is true. I will agree with that 100%. Yes, you need to be available or someone needs to be available. And the way you do this is but you make sure that your team is properly trained, that you have an understanding of the processes, not that you physically do the hands-on work, but you must understand what needs to happen because once you understand what needs to happen, you know how to verify that it is happening. And once you put all of these systems in place to help you create that, that smooth running machine, then you only have to step in as a last resort and then you can have the freedom. I don't know about anyone watching this video, but I do know about me and I know about my clients. And my clients, and including myself, we went into business for freedom. And freedom means being able to walk away and still having things automate. It is doable. You can run your business absentee. Myth number two. SEO is the be all end all answer. Once again, I call BS. I see a lot of videos here. And as a very good friend of mine put it, um, you know, at, at the end of the day, you're a digital marketing guy that everyone has a guy. All right. They're great. They're great at what they do. Uh, if, if you're chasing clicks, that's fantastic. Go, go for it. You know, um, but a digital marketing expert or digital marketing guru or whatever nonsense they they do you know um, i'm not knocking their work because it does have a place and i'll get into that momentarily but the whatever it is they do they are not coaches and consultants they are people who have excelled or have the ability to excel in a specific task to get a specific result their specific task is write copy in, uh, manipulate keywords and manipulate a system to increase the amount of traffic going to your website, to increase the amount of traffic going towards your pay-per-click ad, to your Facebook ad, whatever it is. And that is fantastic. And I, I'm not knocking it. That is, it is a necessary function if you want to maintain a good marketing mix. But marketing SEO is not business development. The fact is, and this has been studied many times, and please feel free, Google this all you want. 70% of your client base will come from referrals and word of mouth. That's it. If I cannot build a solid in-group or influencers network, okay, and I cannot build this solid in-group that consists of primary referral partners, which would be like other agencies, um, skilled nursing facilities, hospitals, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. We'll get into all of this on another video, but if I cannot build the primary secondary and tertiary partners, my tier one, tier two, tier three facilities, which again, we did a video. Um, I, I'll link a bunch of these. You can just look through the channel and about classifying your territory and working with those facilities and understanding what they do. If you cannot do that, you're leaving 70% of your business on the table, period. That's it. There is no argument there, okay? I can spend three to $5,000 monthly on SEO and have everybody click my Google ad 
and I have people call me. And you know what? I will not get as targeted a client or as valuable a client throughout the life of the client as I will by properly building relationships and properly developing my in-group. Okay. That's it. My number one pet peeve, the number one misconception that is touted everywhere. I, I seriously, from Home Care Association, from all, all sorts of agencies, companies selling me, I see an email or a post screaming about the caregiver shortage. I, I very literally get about 30 of these a week. Let me tell you something. I've been doing this for a very long time. I have heard this many times over. And the fact remains, as controversial as what I'm about to say is, and there's gonna be people here that are gonna sit there and they'll probably wanna do a response video. Oh, this guy's full of it. But no, there is no caregiver shortage. And there isn't. If you are having a problem recruiting, raise your pay rate. They'll come to you. You know, what there is, is a retention problem. If you are not able to cover your cases, you have a retention problem. You have a problem with your training of your scheduling staff, your coordinators, your, your you know, direct care supervisors, whatever it is, whoever it is that has to pick up that phone and get somebody to cover a case. Whoever it is that's supposed to bring people into you. Let me tell you, I, I've, been called in because one of the services we offer is an audit where we very literally walk in and help people and just audit them. Here, let me look at your systems. Let me figure it out. What then? First thing we do is I will sit there and when, when the chief complaint is I'm having a problem with my recruitment practices. First thing I will do is I will go into whatever cloud-based system they use to manage their scheduling and I will see and take a solid look at their list of of uh, caregiver, caregivers. And then I will also take a look at the amount of applications they've taken over the course of the year. And the fact is this, many coordinators, coordinators, supervisors, whatever you wanna call them, the scheduling people, okay? They, they have a couple of different names depending on the office. Everybody's name is something different, but they're still the same function. They are coordinating the care and making sure that a caregiver gets to the client. And many of them have their favorites. Oh, I don't use her. She's Mary's caregiver. Or no, no, I've worked with her before. I don't like it. Let me tell you something. What if you get a coma patient? Does it matter how good the caregiver is when you have somebody that just needs to sit there? No, because here's what happens. I put an ad out that I am hiring. I spread the word. I do my social media. I do... I do all the practices to attract more attention, to bring caregivers to me. And then somebody from the office is gonna be concerned about how the caregiver presents or how the caregiver, and 100 caregivers will come in to apply over a given period of time, all right? Once these 100 caregivers come in, only about eight to 10 of them will be hired. That's it, eight to 10. And that's if you have an amazing employee pool in your area. Realistically, it's, it's about three to 5%. Out of every hundred, you're gonna hire three to five. Okay, so what happens at that point? You discard the other 95 to 97. Why? See, once again, your problem is that you're being reactive, not proactive. So if you have 100, why not keep the 25 best? even if the bulk of them are gonna be questionable. Take the time, develop them, train them, show them what's going on. Get them into your culture, into your system and make sure that you are contacting caregivers that have been used in the past. Make sure you are maintaining a relationship. Once again, recruitment, quality assurance, business development, all of this goes hand in hand. It's all about relationships. It's all about managing your company's re reputation. If people, if you just want warm bodies, then go ahead. If you're being reactive and all you're trying to do is hire somebody for a case, that means you are not planning. See, Brionis Consulting Group, our company motto is prepare, plan, and rebuild. Okay. If I don't prepare, how can I possibly plan? 
And if I don't plan, I'm going to have to rebuild. That's it. That's it. It's that simple. All right. So like every other activity, if you're, if you're having issues with client acquisition, well, let's take a look at your business development practices. What systems do you have in place? Well, how are you training your people? How are you supervising your people? Same thing happens with recruitment. So there is no caregiver shortage. There's a retention problem. There's a training problem. There is a supervision issue. Okay. There are fear issues amongst your staff. Okay. A lot of times, and this is something that, that happened with a, a large, uh, this one company that I worked with at one point, they, they were doing about $10, $12 million annually. And the office manager did not want to work. So what, what this person did was as caregivers came in, they would turn them away. They would even turn clients away rather than hire them simply because they did not want that phone call on the weekend. And that, again, meant that they had to be managers and actually train the coordinators how to handle it so that you minimize the amount of phone calls on the weekends. You know, because so rather than work, they wanted to appease. So as a recap, let's five of the greatest misconceptions that are hurting your home care business. It's too competitive to succeed in your area. It's different here, whatever you want to call it. That's a bunch of crap. All right. Home care is straightforward. It is not. It is a tripod. Your home care agency sits on a tripod. If one of these legs here are damaged, then your house will fall over. Okay. That's it. You must manage this properly. Business cannot be run absentee. That, that's a load of crap. As long as you have the right systems in place, you can walk away from your office. I've had many clients successful at doing this. SEO is the answer. SEO is a part of an answer, but it's not the be all end all solution. Okay. You must have a solid marketing mix that is heavily tilted towards business development. If you're tilting more towards SEO, you're going to fail. And there is a caregiver shortage. And once again, that's BS. All right. There is no caregiver shortage. You, you have an office issue you have a training issue, and more importantly, you have a retention issue. Figure it out. Why aren't people staying to work with you? Okay, are you not providing enough hours? Do your coordinators have an attitude? What are you not developing your staff? What is the issue? Do they not feel like they belong? Because I will tell you, caregivers, they'll stay with you even if you're not paying them very well. They will stay as long as they feel like they belong, like they feel as if they are part of the solution and that they don't feel alienated or oust. There is always a bad apple and you do have to prune the tree from time to time, but biggest myth. All right, so once again, please hit the, uh, I think it would be over here somewhere, the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell to get future videos and to get notified. There are a bunch of links down in the section in the description below, um, including how to participate in our Ask the Home Care Expert every Wednesday live at 2 p.m. Um, there's you can do the pre pre made form that the link is below, or you can actually come and chat with us live. I will happily answer your questions as we get them. Also, uh, there's a link to our Facebook group. You know, please. You know, if you want some great free advice, I do live trainings on there periodically. And I also provide a whole lot of freebies, different forms and stuff like that. As time goes on, uh, we're trying to grow the group and we're trying to create as much value as possible in there. Also, the timestamps are below so you can see all of these at your own leisure. OK, or if you want to jump to a specific part to replay. Thanks again for joining us and we'll see you next time.